Hey everybody, I'm Tim Brzezinski. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can start dabbling and playing around in any one of GeoGebra's apps online, whether it be the graphing calculator app, geometry app, the classic app, or even the 3D app, right? Any one of the online apps, okay, that we're playing around in on our Chromebook or computer, doesn't matter, okay? And we can actually save that graph and then quickly turn it into a resource that students can use to uh, engage in discovery-based learning. Okay, it's that easy. And I've gotten asked by several teachers like in the last few weeks with so like it just seems confusing, whatever. I'm going to uh, get rid of all that confusion right here, hopefully in the screencast. I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet because we're all busy. So let's uh, screen share and get to it. Okay, so uh, share and let's do this. So now I'm lot the key is you have to be logged into GeoGebra, which I am. I see my picture up here. Or if you're logged in, you should have a letter up here if you don't have a thumbnail image or something like that, right? And what I did is I actually opened up the graphing calculator app right from these squares here. You can open any one of these apps that you want. It doesn't matter, okay? I did that and I created this construction right here in this tab, all right? Now, granted, all right, I'm, so let's say I'm an Algebra 1 teacher and we're studying, you know, transformations of functions hypothetically, right? So uh, I typed in this function here and it made sliders and I did this. Now granted, most of the times I would have my stu I would have I would have my students mess with this and they could create this themselves, right? But let's suppose I actually have a half day or ooh, there's an early dismissal or you know, class is shortened for whatever reason. I mean, in this in this world of change, change is the only constant in this life, it seems, right? You know, you're you know, the, the time you think you have in school, you know, shrinks, you know, surprise from administration, right? Regardless, so maybe I want to save the students a few minutes and I want to just pre-construct uh, these parameters for them. And so that way they can spend the class time, the limited class time, simply engaging in the discovery and, and discover what these, uh, what the H and what the K do in the graphs of these, uh, to the graph of the parent function here, if that makes sense. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it up the way I normally like it. I mean, normally we like to have the parent function with this being one and this being zero, right? So let's suppose it looks just like this. This is how I want to save it and have my kids play around with it when I give them the link. So here's what I do. I go over here, again, I have to be logged in, that's the key. I go over here, I get file, I hit save. All right, I'm gonna save it as, let's say, um, function exploration or something like that, right? Has to be at least shared with link because uh, if you make it private, only you can see it, nobody else can. Public means anybody in the world can find it, right? But shared is like an unlisted YouTube video, all right? That kind of thing. That's probably, most teachers prefer that option. I'll hit save, and it says saving down here saved successfully okay so that i can actually i can safely exit out of this now but i'll leave the tab open now i'm going to go back into geogebra here all right and i'm going to go to my profile right here okay touch your profile right there and you'll notice that hey you have uh you have uh, something new here right and so you click on it this is where teachers get confused and people have asked me well it's like i, I open it up tim and the tools are gone and i see this i see that but it's like how are my kids supposed to use the tools and mess around with it if, uh, you know, whatever? And that is a great question. What this, what we're looking at right here, what we're doing is like we're looking at a Google Doc in, in a, analogously that we only have view access to, but we do not have edit access to, if you will, okay? But what, what do you do when you have a Google Doc that you can only view and not actually make your own changes to? Well, we go to File and hit Make a Copy, right? And so that's exactly what we're going to do here. But I'm not going to do it in um, I'm not going to do it in my uh, under my login. I'm going to do it under a different login. I'm going to play the role of the student in my class. So what you, the teacher, would need to do again, we're, I'm going to show you two options here. The first option is an easy option. Okay. The first option is to take that URL up there. All right. Uh, and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go into a different web browser where I'm logged in as a different kid, geogebra.org. I'm logged in here now as not as me, but as fake student one or something like that, right? So regardless, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take that URL, let's say you gave it to me via Google Classroom, or maybe you gave it to me in some other LMS, Schoology, Canvas, OneNote, I don't care, right? But you, you throw it in there, you see, you have uh, Tim Brzezinski's, the teacher's file that he made, but you can't do anything. So what, you, what the student could do here is go to the three dots in the upper corner. And the key here is to open in the app. All right. What that is like going to file in Google, that's like going to file, make a copy of something that you can't edit. So I go to open an app and just wait for it. There it is. You see now I have the classic tool. I, I actually created this 
and you say, wait, 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 Tim, hold on a second. When you made this originally, you did it in the graphing calculator app. You didn't do it in the classic app. Yes, you're absolutely right. So if you want, if you want your students to mess around in the classic app, I mean, some teachers like the classic app. All the tools are here. Again, anyone of you that have been using GeoGebra for several years are used to the classic feel and the look here. But if you want this to have, if you want this to open up in the in the newer app, go to the URL. There's a little trick here. What you can do is change the word classic right here. Change it to graphing and enter and watch what happens. Oh my goodness, look at there. And that's exact, now the student can have an exact clone of what you did, have an exact clone of what you have there by just, you. and actually you could change the link yourself. If you take that hyperlink right there and you say, you know, classic, but regardless, it, it naturally opens in classic, but then all you have to do is change classic to uh, graphing for graphing calculator, change the word classic to geometry if you want it to open in the geometry app, um, you could change it to 3D if you want it to open the 3D app, if it's a 3D construction, say. All right. But now look at this. I, the student, have, I can mess around online here in the app and just uh, engage in the dis quick discovery learning because I have limited time in your class for whatever reason. Okay. That's one way. You see, when I did discovery learning in my classes all the time, at times when I used GeoGebra, I did not build this elegant looking resource with a small applet window in it and questions. Sometimes, most of the times, I have my kids go to the apps and just play and they built themselves. But for students who struggled more, I, I, I did some of the scaffolding for them, if you will, so that they could spend more time focusing on the transformation changes versus putting the actual sliders in in the equations, if that makes sense. Okay. So again, one technique again is to simply just go to uh, to paste the URL that I had uh, right in there. Right. You can't view it, but then again, here, open an app. It creates an editable copy that the student can save to his or her GeoGebra account if he or she is logged in. All right. But again, if you don't want the classic look, change the word classic, as I said before, change it to graphing, and you're good. All right? So that's one way kids can actually mess with constructions right in the app on their own, uh, maybe school-issued Chromebooks or computers or whatever. Okay? Now, but let's suppose you want to make a resource out of this. Here's option two. I'm going to just show you right quickly. Let's minimize this. Now, I'm going to go to here. See, I I'm in GeoGebra. I'm logged in as me now, uh, the teacher again. I go to my profile, and there it is. But I, I, the teacher, it's like, dude, I created this. How come I can't edit it? Well, by default, you get a view access only. So what you want to do, okay, when you go back to your profile profile here, is you go to the three dots, hit edit activity. Okay. Now I can edit this. And I under, whenever you work in, the, in one of GeoGebra's apps online and you save it to your profile page in GeoGebra, obviously you're logged in, of course, right? If you're not logged in, you hit save, it's going to prompt you to log in because you can't save anything if you're not logged in, right? But if you go to edit here, like here, uh, and scroll down a bit, you see this. Now, let's suppose you want this to be the discovery window your students work in. And let's suppose you want to insert questions, right? You can put a question in here. Whoops. Let's say you could put a question in here and say, OK, when was the war of 1812? You're asking them the HK. You're asking them to describe you know, things here. Some teachers like to just have kids open in the app and just simply do it there, pretty much. Uh, but other kids like to, let me just, uh, let me just re refresh this here. Sorry about that. Oh, too many times. Hang on. Second. All right. So we're there now. Now I go to edit. Okay. Um, I can put my I could put questions in here and I could put a PDF. I could put I could put activity questions here for the kids to do if I don't want to open it in a separate app. But see, if you want to make kids actually have a re if you want to build a resource out of your, you know, quick construction you made in the app, option two here is to simply go to edit activity that we just did here, hit the pencil icon up here to edit, you scroll down and go to advanced settings. That's where it's at. Now, small Chromebook screens, uh, 1680 pixels wide is not the ideal size, but I like to make it no more than 900 when I do it. Uh, and let's go down again. Let's say make it by 600. That's an okay size. I mean, you can make it a thousand. It's not, it's not that it's the end of the world. It's still going to load. But if you look here, right, it's kind of, you know, and I could also, if I go here, I could drag it out a little bit. It's only going to take maybe a two seconds longer to load, not the biggest deal in the world. But now, where's the tools, Tim? That's a great question. Well, here I have options. You want to show toolbar. See, the toolbar doesn't naturally show by default, but now I can make the toolbar show for kids to analyze further whatever I ask them to do. I can show the menu if I want the kids to save it to their own to make their own construction. By showing the menu, this allows them to go to file, save, if they're logged in GeoGebra, and they could take the URL of their save construction, you know, and give you a URL to what they did 
on your whatever LMS you have, right? Um, I like to show the input bar. I like to show the style bar. Style bar is just to show different, make things different colors, the artistically thing. Uh, I like to drag labels around. I usually check everything except for preserve aspect ratio. That's what I just simply do. I don't know why, I just that's just what I do. Now, if you are one of those people that don't like the classic app, but you want it to appear in the newer apps, like the graphing calculator geometry, like the blue backgroundy one, then just go down here to say, hey, what GeoGebra app do you want it to open in? Change it to graphing calculator. And look at this. Now I can go here. And now I have a much smaller applet window through which kids can, kids can actually work, right? See that? And now I could put my, I hit, I hit done. And then now here I can add my, I can add my element, uh, put a questions. Now I can ask my questions digitally, you know, hey, what happens when, you know, H, blah, 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 you know, your discovery questions in this activity and kids tell you what they discover by playing around with this here. And now I go hit uh, in, under activity settings. If you want to put your own thumbnail here, image, you can, you can describe it. Um, Right now, GeoGebra defaults to share with links. So let's hit save and close and see how this looks now. Now, function exploration. See, option two, you can save. Option two is you save your graph, you know, as whatever. But then you have to go in and edit. It saves it as an activity or a resource. But then you go and edit the resource and make it look just the way you want. And look at this. If I'm a student in your class viewing it now, this is what I'm going to see. And on my Chromebook screen, it's going to take just quick to load. It's going to be nice. And I can play with this. I can move it around and analyze different uh, things about it through the questions that you may choose to ask. So what did I do? I started here, and uh, there were two different ways we can make uh, you know, editable, GeoGebra app, edited, editable GeoGebra files that kids could open in any app they want and do it that way. So that's, uh, I hope that answers questions, because I've been getting asked that um, quite a bit lately from uh, several teachers and stuff. So uh, that's how I used to do it. Um, I used to have my kids just go and play and build, but for the time, again, just for the time where my struggling students or when, oops, it's a half day because we get early dismissal because of snow. I live in New England, right? Happened a lot. But, um, you know, I used to just maybe provide some scaffolding for them to save more time for them to discover and less time to build. Options are yours. All right. So just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. We'll have some more GeoGebra how-tos coming up next week. I'm Tim Brzezinski. Thanks for watching.